After watching the Saiyan Saga, you might have asked, why did Vegeta kill Nappa? He could have been of some use. What did he do that deserved death? Well, in this video, we're going to be answering that question, so stay tuned. I believe there are several reasons why Vegeta killed Nappa, but actually you could say it was down to one cause. But anyways, here are the reasons why Vegeta killed Nappa. Number one, because Nappa lost to Goku. Nappa couldn't lay a hand on Goku, let alone defeat him, and this disgraced Vegeta and the Saiyans, so Vegeta felt Nappa wasn't worthy to be alive. Number two, because Goku gravely injured Nappa's spine, rendering him unable to walk, let alone fight again. But why didn't Vegeta think of using Frieza's healing chambers? Surely they had the technology to heal grave injuries. Maybe he figured Nappa would die en route in the pod, or maybe Toriyama hadn't thought up these machines yet. Number three, because Vegeta had mercy on Nappa. Vegeta saw the injuries as painful or not worth enduring, so he empathized with Nappa and took compassion on his fellow warrior and ended his life quickly. Perhaps they had a secret pact where if they ever lost, the other would end their suffering to avoid capture. It's better to die with honor than be remembered begging for help. Was Vegeta really being a good friend and keeping their sign agreement? Perhaps Vegeta was giving an honorable death through active combat and fulfilled the sign code of ending the life of a crippled comrade. However, what makes this an unlikely reason is Vegeta's elated smile when killing his comrade. This is the face of a sicko and it's downright suspicious. I mean, what guy does that? Number four, because Nappa begged for help. Vegeta looked upon Nappa's plea as pathetic, desperate and disgusting. He'd reduced the dignity of the Saiyans, the, the proud race of whom he was part. It was the single most cowardly thing someone could do in the eyes of a proud warrior. Vegeta was at his most prideful here, so seeing a paralyzed Saiyan begging for help was the most pathetic thing he'd ever seen. Later in the Freezer Saga, Kui, Dodoria and Zabon also did the same, which triggered Vegeta to dispatch them quickly. So in outrage, Vegeta enacted judgement for Nappa being a cowardly Saiyan. However, Vegeta was a hypocrite himself as he cowardly fled from fights on Namek a few times. He abandoned Goku once and tried to escape Frieza. However, running from Frieza was only in the anime. But anyways, it's funny how Vegeta ended up the same way at the end of the Saiyan Saga. What goes around, comes around. Number five, because Nappa disobeyed orders and kept messing up. Firstly, Nappa underestimated Krillin's destructor disc and caused Vegeta to warn him and save his life. Secondly, Vegeta wanted to take on Goku himself, but Nappa and his ego tried to then attack Gohan and Krillin, which was disobedience. All this irritated Vegeta to the point of using the Galaxy Breaker. Number six, because Nappa killed Piccolo, admittedly by accident. Once this happened, Vegeta's hope for immortality were crushed as the Earth Dragon Ball ceased to exist. Nappa was warned about this earlier when he blew up a city. However, Vegeta did call off Piccolo being necessary when he learned of the Namek Dragon Balls and discovered Goku's 5000 power level. Vegeta's goal even before killing Nappa was to dispose of Goku and Gohan, thereby becoming the prince of a nearly extinct species and then wish for immortality. He basically wanted to kill people indefinitely because he really enjoyed it. In the heart, Vegeta seemed to care for his race as he confessed it to Goku in tears, but most of the time he wouldn't show emotions and even stated the opposite, that he didn't care about his people at all, like when he fought Dodoria. Number seven. Now this is the reason I bet most of you will resonate with, because Vegeta was a ruthless, heartless being and it was necessary for Toriyama to show how evil he was. Interestingly, Toriyama had no idea how famous Vegeta would become as a result. In terms of character development, what's worse than someone who will kill one of the last three of his own race? Let's face it, Vegeta was the definition of ruthless, and it's not surprising that killing Nappa was his first inclination. Vegeta was basically a mirror of Frieza, and Raccoon said Vegeta's ruthlessness made him one of Frieza's favourites. So when Frieza was away, Vegeta would take control and make himself feel powerful by acting in the same manner. Frieza had no reservations about killing his own men, and this rubbed off on Vegeta. This is just as the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15.33, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Vegeta always got Nappa to do the grunt work, and figured he was of no more use. 
It's likely Toriyama hadn't developed a Zenkai trait yet, so perhaps Vegeta didn't realise Nappa could get stronger. But even if Vegeta did realise, he would have calculated it wasn't worth it. Let me explain why. On Vegeta's first Zenkai boost after Earth, his power level increased from 18,000 to 24,000, which is a 33.3% increase. So with the same math, Nappa's power level might only increase from 4,000 to 5,320, which really isn't useful, especially when the Namek Saga was coming up. There was simply no way Nappa could get stronger than the new Goku, so Vegeta wouldn't have feared Nappa being on par with himself. Then we come to another question which you might ask. Why did Vegeta kill Nappa again in Dragon Ball GT? Well, in that episode, Nappa was portrayed as a mindless destroyer, which wasn't really an accurate picture of his character. Nappa would have known Vegeta got out of hell in the Boo Saga, so he probably, yes, did take the opportunity to vent his frustrations through destruction on Earth. Vegeta knew at this point that Nappa was still no use, but it was disappointing that we didn't get any dialogue from Nappa. All they had him do was just grunt. <laughs> I guess if Vegeta apologised for killing Nappa years earlier, it would be way more awkward to then just do it again. Maybe this was Vegeta trying to burn his bridges, but he could have showed mercy to Nappa this second time, considering he wasn't a threat at all, but it would be hard for Nappa to become a good guy, as he was born to plunder and destroy and had experienced more of this in hell. So I guess it was easier for the riders to just quickly get rid of Nappa, but then what was the point of bringing him back in the first place? It was pointless. I also want to mention something. In the world today, we don't see much of mercy. People are always blaming others for things that go wrong in life and hardly forgiving and forgetting what was committed. Just think though about how many times every day we have done what God has said not to do, and yet he is so long-suffering and, and doesn't judge us or end our life suddenly. He is very willing to forgive us and cleanse us from wrongdoing when we tell him the wrong that we've done and ask for forgiveness. He offers us his power through Jesus to overcome every wrong thing and completely change to the opposite, about face 180 degrees. Jesus told people in Matthew chapter 6 verse 12 to pray to God, forgive us the wrongs we have done as we forgive the wrongs that others have done to us. So God will forgive us on the condition that we forgive others. If we do this, we will also feel freed from bitterness, which is like a toxic substance in your heart and mind. So we covered the reasons why Vegeta killed Nappa. Definitely let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and which one you think was the reason why, or the reasons why, if there's multiple. I think personally it was number two, number five, and number seven. And also guys, if you missed it, check out this video up here in the corner about why Vegeta hated Goku. I think it will really expand your understanding. And also, if you made it this far in the video, comment down below, hashtag Enders, and I'll feature you in the next video. Thanks guys for watching, and if you enjoyed it, please okay. that like button, and definitely subscribe to expand your knowledge of Dragon Ball and get coverage of Super, and lastly, check out the other videos of mine on the end screen, and you're gonna help Universe 7 rank higher. Thanks, Kai Kai!